question. Thank you for that. So for the next few questions, I'm hoping we can go a little bit more rapid fire since we have a lot of content still to cover, um, but I wanna make sure that we get to some of these topics that are quite important. And our next question is talking about uh, what makes it a little bit challenging uh, using the Russian language. So what can make it challenging or maybe unique, maybe unique might be a better word, to Russian that makes giving feedback a little bit more challenging. So what are the things maybe about the Russian language in general that can make giving feedback more challenging to your students? And how do you address this? Uh, Heather, would you like to chime in first, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I would say that it's um, how different Russian is, the, the different grammatical structures um, in Russian uh, versus English. One of the first things that my students learn how to say, and I'm sure everybody's students learn how to say here, is my name is, which is Minyazavu. It's a completely different grammatical structure, but students tend to interpret this phrase as a word for word translation from English into Russian. So this Minya means me, it's this accusative case form of me, and Zavut is a verb form that means they call. So its word order is different. The words themselves are, are completely different, but at first students just, it, and like they would, you know, naturally do you translate from English, they align this word minya with my, and zavut must mean name. And so it's that the structure of Russian is just so incredibly different. Um, how do you even convey from the very beginning this concept of case and word order when they're learning a, a foreign language perhaps for the first time. If you're a native English speaker, even conceiving of this idea is so foreign and so hard. And so I think I feel like it's that. It's it's that that this this vast difference in in the, the language, the way they're structured. Um, talking about that itself. I think makes giving the correction um, or, or giving feedback challenging because, um, like, students mean, "What do you? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean that's not just my name is?" Um, if that if that makes sense, I'm sure my colleagues have have plenty to say about this. That makes perfect sense. Whenever there's so much difference, and students want to intuitively jump in, but they maybe shouldn't make those connections just yet. That can definitely make things challenging. Really good, thank you. Uh, Olga, if you'd like to chime in next, what kinds of things do you think are unique to Russian that make giving feedback more challenging to students and how do you address that? I personally, I'm not sure if I even agree with this, <laughs> with this phrase and that unique to Russian because I think teaching any, any world language Right, uh, especially if it is a less commonly taught language, not necessarily Russian, can be challenging for English speakers. Right, so I personally I cannot think of anything specific about Russian in comparison to any other less commonly taught languages and uh, those languages that use a different uh, alphabet, you know, different uh, uh, letters. So, but I think what what I notice and what helps when let's say Russian grammar definitely is different from English grammar. So I think what helps me in my classroom, and it's not necessarily an online classroom, right? this is in general my, my Russian language classroom, is that trying to bring more parallels and trying to bring more associations and connections, first of all, to other languages that they studied or to other languages that they knew, because we also have... Um, very often in my at Pete, we get uh, students of other Slavic languages that are taking Russian. So we have Ukrainians, we have uh, Polish students from heritage, uh, uh, Slovak heritage, or Croatian heritage. So I try when, of course, when I learn about the students in the beginning about their background, and I try to find out like what other languages they studied before. This helps me because I can bring parallels. So. And I bring, I can bring, because I also studied German at some point and French. So I can, when I'm explaining something, conjugations, uh, case system, I can refer them to those languages. But even sometimes drawing parallel in, if some of them don't have, uh, I know, really solid uh, knowledge or uh, skills and uh, any solid skills in other uh, languages besides English, 
sometimes I even try to bring parallels uh, to English and even explaining things like, oh, they're like, why so different? Like case system is so different. And it's like, why do you have? And I said, well, but just think about this. Well, you don't say um, uh, who you you got this uh, present, right? It's like who you got this present. It's like, what's this? You say from whom you've got this present. And this is your who versus whom. And this is your to whom, from whom. Even small, you know, drawing parallels to things like that they're already familiar, that maybe they just never focus because it's in their native language. It also helps with heritage speakers, right? Using like integrating meta, -ling uh, meta language and trying to kind of bring whatever they already have, <laughs> any luggage that came to my classroom and just find out about it, what they have and what I can use in order to to make uh, studying Russian easy and more comprehensible more comprehensible and uh, more digestible <laughs> so that's that's my couple words on this topic excellent and i'm sure that you and i have a lot of the same struggles although i teach japanese you teach russian i'm sure we have a lot of the same struggles because the languages are structured so different from english and sometimes students don't always get that the first time so excellent thank you for sharing uh, let's go to Evgeny again. Same question. Uh, what do you think are some of the things that might be a little bit more unique to Russian that give giving feedback um, makes it a little bit more challenging for your students and how do you address that? Sure. Uh, a quick answer. I think, you know, the fact that Russian has endings and and that coupled with imperfect technology and the fact that I cannot always hear well what my students are saying and sometimes they're saying things correctly but I'm mishearing them and not hearing you know uh exactly what they're saying through zoom uh whether it's because their connection is bad or my connection is bad I think that's that's a challenge because you know are we sure we you know we're <laughs> correcting what needs to be corrected or it's just uh the audio problem i think that's 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 the challenge and you know going back to phonetics i think because because russian has different uh sounds uh sound system and there are a lot of words a lot of sounds that are unique to russian uh and intonation patterns that that needs to be uh, uh addressed um uh, so that that's and uh, Again, like we were saying, technology is not perfect this day. So uh, working on that is is a challenge. Giving feedback and correcting the sounds um, makes it difficult to do online. That can definitely be challenging, especially whenever there are audio glitches. That can definitely be hard for any language. Definitely, I agree. And then Larissa, same question. Uh, what kinds of things are maybe a little bit more unique to Russian that can make giving feedback challenging? And how do you overcome that? Yes, and here too, I will say there's a two like major um, challenges. Is one is uh, like everybody said, and Heather and Olga and Evgeny. Uh, yes, it's a very different grammar, um, and it's hard sometimes to explain. Some students really want to have a translation, like tell me how it's in English, and there's not everything you can actually tell how it is in English. It's just not possible to translate. So you just have to kind of explain with words, but there is no equivalent of, you know, the difference of some things, um, especially even for the advanced speakers is like a perfect and imperfect aspect of uh, the Russian verbs. Um, and it's very difficult. I've heard so many like, uh, uh, мы пошли, uh, мы пошли yeah. <laughs> yeah, so all of this, of course, interference with the English here and all this, you know, go, the verb go everywhere, but uh, all the verb do is everywhere, but it's not, um, you have to choose a different one. And it's very hard to explain, uh, even on a like very advanced levels to practice and practice and practice. And so there are some rules sometimes, but there are so many exceptions too. Um, that I'm saying, yeah, okay, here's, yeah, the genitive plural, here's a rule, but, but, <laughs> um, not even native speakers sometimes use it correctly. So we have to be, um, yeah, careful with that. Um, another thing is that uh, unique to the heritage speakers, I think, is they come from different families and they learn Russian. The first Russian was from their families and the community groups. 
um, may, very often their parents themselves immigrated to the United States as, in, as children. So they were not educated in America, uh, I mean, in Russia, I'm sorry. And um, their language is kind of a mix of everything, of different dialects. So uh, the most common is um, English and Russian and Ukrainian, because in a community, these languages are kind of intermixed. Uh, and then uh, in the community, everybody's speaking this kind of a pidgin variation uh, and understand each other. Uh, and when they come to the classroom and I have to provide them feedback that this is not the right form. You can't say that this is not correct. So I think this is very emotional. And I learned that you have to be very, very careful how you provide the feedback. Um, I have this, um, as a linguist, of course, I believe that all the different forms of languages are valid. Uh, if we can communicate, and if there's a group of people understanding every, each other, so this this is a good, uh, good example of uh, this dialect. And, you know, translanguaging, it's a beautiful form of kind of a stepping stone to uh, toward bilingualism. Um, and it's accepted, uh, you know, it's not under how have to be very strict about this, it's like a stepping stone. But I think it's essential for us to teach students a standardized form of a language so they can communicate um, effectively outside of their small community groups and use language professionally. Um, and they can succeed on a standardized exam. So otherwise, if they'll provide the form that they speak, they will not be able to get any um, any credits for that uh, that dialect. So I use this analogies, analogies um, to sports or music. I would say, for instance, there is a different, we can, okay, you can say I can swim, right? I can swim in a, um, in a lake with my friends and it, it's fun. But if I'm going to Olympics, that will be not enough, <laughs> right? I have to follow the rules and I have to be really precise rules or otherwise I'm disqualified from the, from the Olympics. Uh, or with the music too. A lot of people can, you know, play piano, guitar casually at the gathering. Um, we have fun, we play. It's, um, it's great. But then if we enter some kind of the um, competition or if we go to concert, right we judged on how well you can use the rules so i found this analogy works um when we speak about the standard the russian and the one is a mix with the different dialects um so like first again setting up the uh, norms and when i provide a feedback and why i do that it's not because you know my language is better than yours um, or I'm not a st stuck up the, um, you know, academic ladies just because I care about you and we want to know the standard form It's acceptable to talk at home. Um, uh, and it's great with your, with your dialect, uh, using your dialect. But, you know, if you go to an academic setting, you have to use another, um, another language, another uh, forms of it. Um, so I think this is important to, yeah, take this in consideration and when providing a feedback, to know that um, it could be very personal, you know, if a community member speaks this dialect. That is a really good point, Larissa, and I love the analogies you're giving about swimming in the lake versus the Olympics or playing guitar at home versus, say, going to piano recital. It's a really good analogy, and it shows that you're acknowledging the skills that your students have, but at the same time, I care about you. I want you to advance the level of proficiency. And if you needed to use the say in academic or business setting, you would know how to proceed. Beautiful analogy. Thank you so much for sharing that.